Welcome back to The Jump and welcome in to Celtic Center, Ennis Cantor. So nice to have you back on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. Congratulations are in order. You recently tweeted that your father, who had been sentenced to 15 years in prison mm -hmm. in Turkey, was being released. And I want to read your exact yeah. words here. You said, quote, wow, I could cry. Today I found out that seven years after arresting my dad, taking him through a kangaroo court and accusing him of being a criminal mm -hmm. just because he's my dad, my dad has been released. You said, this is due to the pressure we have put on the Turkish regime. Mm -hmm. You wrote, they no longer could keep him from his freedom because of the spotlight that we all put on this case. However, he is just one person. There are still tens of thousands of people wrongfully in jail in Turkey. I will not forget you. We will not forget you. So, and it's understandably very mm -hmm. emotional stuff there. Right. What have the past few days been like for you? Oh, first of all, I want to you know, thank all my teammates, um, all my coaches, all the NBA family and all the fans, you know. Uh, it's been a tough road, uh, seven years. Uh, we've been, you know, fighting uh, with the Turkish government and trying to, uh, you know, release not just my dad, but all the political prisoners in the jail. My dad is only one, you know. So many people know my story because I play in NBA. But my, my thing is there's so many people and so many families out there, this situation is way worse than mine. You know, so that's why I have to, that's why I tweeted out and said, you know, my fight is not over, it's just getting started. It's been amazing. You've been fighting for freedom and, and trying to release political prisoners and democracy back in Turkey. You've also been a visible part of the Black Lives Matter movement and protest. You were the only player I saw, Ennis, who wore your actual jersey to one of the marches. Why did you want to do that? I mean, first of all, I will say this. I know what is it like to fight for freedom, uh, justice, and democracy. So that's why I was actually spending my quarantine time in Chicago. And we actually dropped 20 hours to uh, come back to Boston because they told me that I cannot fly. So I just wanted to let the whole world know, literally just the Celtics got your back. I love that. Um, I, I do want to ask you about basketball also, since the NBA is marching toward a return mm -hmm. here. You've been very transparent about the COVID testing. You posted a video online of you getting a swab stuck down your throat. Can you take oh, us inside yeah. what it has been like for players these past few weeks as you guys have been reporting to the facility, all the precautions they're having you take when you're even just going to shoot a basketball into a hoop and, and now getting tested? First of all, Celtics did an amazing job to just keep the players in shape. We actually had this like FaceTime virtual workout that you know, get on a call and literally just try to do the best we can to stay in shape in our apartment. You know, some people will like it because workouts, they have big though, spaces, and it's, like, it's not the same thing. Someone could have like a yeah. chicken leg off the screen or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I, I saw some players actually doing curls with suitcase full of clothes. I'm like, man, this is like a championship mentality. I love it. You know, that's going to bring us the championship. But it's just so nice to just go back to your facility and just start, uh, you know, working out. Everybody has their own basketball and you cannot touch anyone else's basketball. Everybody has their own rim. You know, it, it's, been, it's been crazy. Uh, we have to get tested once every two days. Uh, but I think, you know, that shows that NBA trying to do everything uh, they can to just making sure the players are safe and they're comfortable to go out there and, and play. Some players have expressed concerns about going down to Orlando. Do you have any worries about the setup, either from a health perspective or just the idea of how grueling it's going to be to be go go down there for up to three months? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I had conversation with, I mean, it's obviously my nine year in the league. I had conversation with so many other uh, players, you know. So, like, the players, some of the players don't want to play. They just signed their biggest contract. They have the best shoe deal out there. All the endorsements are coming in. They live in like the biggest, you know, market out there. You cannot just talk for yourself. You gotta look, if you're a leader, you have to like look at the whole league, you know? I look to some like rookies and, or some players, they live in paycheck to paycheck. They have to take care of themselves and they have to take care of their family. And I'm here and for that, if you don't play this year, potential there might be a possible lock on next year so you're talking right. about this year and next year you know and if you're if your concern is like social justice and everything in orlando the whole world will be watching and if you're really about that life hey go to make the play playoff get that money and donate to black Lives matters foundation or, or donate to uh, something else you know so like don't 
Yeah, it's twisted. Someone wants, wants to hoop and someone wants to go out there and compete. Well, I'm getting pretty specific there with me, and as you know, big city shoe deal star player. Do you want to get specific got, at all? Who are we talking about? Yeah, I, I, I think you got it right. I think you got it. That's the, the one in your head. I think you got it. <laughs> no name. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.